Hello, this is Todd Tolles, and today we're going to talk about adding compute resources and adding volumes in, in the Power Store GUI. So let's go ahead and first add a volume to the environment. So we'll click into storage, uh, and we want to add volumes. So one of the things I can do is I can click into volumes, and I'll see, but I can have a shortcut, which is just add, quick directly add me a new volume. So I can go ahead and choose the name of the volume. So I can say, for example, let's say the application is my first name. Todd, I can go ahead and do that uh, in the environment. Uh, and it will remind me, for example, what the requirements are that I have to have a name in the volume. I can put a description. This is my volume, for example. And then I can create how many do I want to create. So let's for, say, for example, I'm going to create 10 volumes. Uh, and I'm going to make them each 50 gig in size. Uh, and we do have the ability as well to specify in megabytes, gigabytes, or terabytes in the environment. From a placement point of view, uh, by default, we set to auto, which is use the ML of the system to provide the most appropriate resource. Or in this case, you can see in my demo environment, I have two appliances. So I could say I manually want to go ahead and put it on one appliance or the other. So I'll leave it auto. Uh, I can choose a volume group uh, in the environment. So I can say, for example, you know, let's say, for example, maybe I'm adding this to HANA. So I can go ahead and go to HANA. One of the things it tells you, it tells you about the environment, right? It tells you uh, is it right order consistent? Um, is there a protection policy? Where, what, where is it located? Because it will then associate it with that particular appliance. Uh, and then what are other volumes in the environment? So in this case, I'm going to uncheck it because I'm just going to go ahead uh, and uh, not associate it to a volume group in this case. Uh, I can set a volume protection policy uh, in the environment. So I could say, well, protection policy one, uh, and then performance policy. So if I'm ever curious, I do have these, uh, these hints uh, in the environment. So the default is medium, uh, and I can also set a, a, a low or high performance policy. This allows the system in areas of resource contention to determine what you believe is the most important uh, in the environment. So then I can say, I want to go ahead and map it to a host uh, in the environment. So this, these are the hosts uh, that I have uh, in the environment. So in this case, I'm going to map it to uh, these particular hosts in the environment. You can, of course, map it to multiples. Uh, and of course, you can say, I want to specify a logical unit number. Those of you from other technologies re may remember this as called a HLU or host, host logical uh, unit number. Um, but in this case, I'll just let it generate it automatically in the environment. Uh, and then it's going to give me the information, what's happening, right? So I'm creating in the volumes. Uh, here's the placement that it's chosen for me for the appliance one. That's what the ML told it to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add it to two different hosts my performance policy uh, in the environment. Uh, and then I'll just go ahead uh, and click create in the environment. Uh, and if you notice in the upper right hand corner, you can see that it's 5% complete uh, in, in the environment. Uh, and then up here, I will see a job, right? So I can see this job operating. Now I can continue to operate uh, in my environment um, while this is operating. So one of the things I also want to do while we're, we're doing that uh, in the environment, I want to show you uh, how volumes look. So in this case, you can see a business warehouse volume uh, in the environment. There are no alerts associated with it. Uh, I've provisioned a terabyte out, and it's used about 840 gig in the environment. I can see its protection policy in the environment. Anything that's highlighted in blue here, I can click uh, into the environment. So for example, I can click to this particular one. Uh, and by the way, you can see up here that my volume has cr uh, created, creation has completed while I'm talking to you. Uh, that gets highlighted in, in as we were doing. Uh, but I can also click into uh, host mappings uh, in the environment. So I can say, all right, I want to look at this particular volume, so this particular business warehouse volume, and it will show me the information about it, what alerts apply to it, what the performance of it is, the capacity of it is, where it's mounted immediately in the environment. So I, I can quick and easily drill uh, into the environment if, for example, I'm doing troubleshooting. But I'm going to go back to volumes here uh, in the environment, uh, and I'm going to go ahead uh, and filter. Right, so one of the things I can do is filter. What do I want to use uh, in the environment? So I can say, for example, uh, I'm going to filter into Todd, and I can see here's the volumes I created uh, in the environment. Uh, and you can see I've mapped them to two different hosts in the environment, what its protection policy is, and it's very easily easy to do. So now let's go ahead and talk about how I would add a host. So in host, hosts are all about compute resources, so I'm going to add a host in the environment. So you can see I had some, uh, some host already configured in here. Uh, so in this case, I, in my example earlier, I used the two ESX servers. 
Uh, we can, of course, support Vorus Fiber Channel uh, and iSCSI in the environment. Uh, and I could quickly easily see what's mapped, right? So for example, uh, I can see that this Windows host, for example, just has a single initiator uh, in, in the environment uh, versus the Windows host group has multiple initiators. That gives me the flexibility to see what's quickly mapped uh, and what's quickly used in the environment. So I'm gonna add a, a uh, let's create a host, uh, we'll create a host first. So we'll create a host uh, and we'll call it uh, Windows um, Todd Server. Uh, I can quickly and easily determine what my operating system is um, because as you probably know, uh, host responds slightly, slightly different uh, in the environment. A Windows host looks slightly different than an ESXi server in terms of its response. Uh, so we'll choose Windows here because that's what I'm using. I can put a description if I'd like. Uh, I can choose my connectivity. Right? Am I connecting via iSCSI or fiber channel uh, in the environment? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and choose fiber channel here. It then would detect what it sees in the environment that's not already associated to a host. In this case, because I'm in a demo environment, all my initiators have already been used. So if I had new initiators, I could go ahead and uh, do that uh, in here. Similarly, if I go back and look at iSCSI, iSCSI will do the exact same things as well. So it'll automatically use uh, discovery to go ahead and look for new initiators, or I can manually add an initiator uh, in the environment. But I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this because uh, I've showed you the process of what you're doing. We can also say, I wanna add a host group uh, in the environment. Um, I'm gonna say, I want these two hosts to act like one, right? So for example, I can say, I want this to be the ESXi host group uh, in the environment. Uh, I can either be fiber channel or iSCSI uh, in, in the environment. One of the things to note is you can't have a volume when you add a host group. You must have hosts that have no volumes mapped to it. So if you remember here, uh, and if I go ahead and, and, uh, and cancel this environment, you'll, you'll notice here that all my hosts have things mapped to it. So I cannot add a host group in this particular environment. So hopefully that gave you an introduction uh, to uh, both adding volumes uh, and adding hosts and looking at both volumes and hosts in the environment. Good luck and good selling.